right, it's your boy Big Dog here again with another TV repair video. And this one here is another power supply board. Uh, this board comes out, out of a 65 inch Vizio. The model number on this set is a E as an Echo 65X as an X ray dash C2. And the problem that we're having with this TV is that uh, the TV was totally dead. Okay. Um, so the first thing, obviously, that we're going to check. Here's our uh, five volts uh, standby voltage. Okay, um, here in the customer's house, the standby voltage was jumping around. It was unsteady. It was not at five volts. It was jumping from like one to two to three or something like that. But I'm just going to show you again, uh, especially how to test um, uh, this particular board here. Um, as you can see, we have our uh, okay. Uh, as you can see, before my camera <laughs> fell over, uh, as I was saying, it's the uh, power supply board. I actually did pull the board, and uh, this, of course, this is the primary side here, and this is the secondary side, uh, or the cold side. As you can see, it is marked secondary, primary, so hot, cold. Don't want to touch anything over here, especially if you just have the board and you plugging it in uh, just an early warning before I forget to tell you especially while it's on do not put your hands all over this do not grab the board from the bottom because otherwise you ruin. you can get a very serious shock um, and even after you even after the board is unplugged uh, still make sure that you do not put your hands across these caps because you will get a jock and that's gonna wake you up but our secondary, uh, I'm sorry, our primary, um, I'm just trying to say, our standby voltage is always on the secondary side. And fortunately for us, this board does have a legend, which means uh, the pinouts are labeled. Um, so we can just zoom in here. And this is our pin. These other two uh, or three plugs, uh, the one here at the bottom and the two on the side at the bottom, I think those are going to the LEDs. And I'm, I, I forget. But this is, the, this is the one that we know that's going to the main board, this plug right here, because uh, it is marked, uh, thank God, right? And as you can see, our uh, 5 volts here, standby, is actually, um, I'm sorry, yeah, we have two 5 volt standbys, pin 1s and 2, and then another 5 volts, uh, which I think is tied to the same line. So we should at least be getting pins 1 and uh, 2 here, the 5 volts. I'm just going to show you how to check this right here, these boards. They're fairly simple. Um, you know, um, just know how it works, know what you're looking for, you know, do a little tracing back if you're not, if you're unsure, just trace the uh, traces back and, and things like that. But um, this is going to be pretty simple here, pretty simple repair. I'm going to try to get this done as quick as I can here. Okay, we're going to take our meter and... Um, we're actually going to uh, ground it. I don't know why I can't get a light there, but that's weird. Okay. Anyway, we'll just take our meter here, and we're actually going to ground it. We're going to turn it around. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Okay. This is our. Actually, we're going to ground it right here on the secondary side here okay just a little alligator clip and the other end is the other end is, is connected to our negative lead on the checker and uh... actually going to be easier to turn it around because i don't want to like test the pins and, and short one next to it or whatever but just for me um, i'm just going to turn it around and as you can see if i turn it around this time the standby pin is on, is on the top right here okay I do have those marked I believe so here's our standby pin okay pins one and two and um, okay so I actually want to plug it in To 
some more light here and we're actually going to go to pin one and as you can see uh, it is jumping around that is our standby voltage and I think pin two is also a standby yes okay and as you can see it was labeled uh, five volts uh, so it is not five volts it is jumping around and I don't know if you remember my last video I had made or one of the videos I made on the power supply board uh, it was jumping around with the main board plugged in and uh, I'm sorry just so you know let me get in my, get in my head getting ahead of myself this plug here this entire plug uh, is going to the main board that's the plug from the main board okay so that's that's what we're mostly concerned about here but um, as you can see that's the, on the other video with the main board unplugged with the main board plugged in, it was jumping around just like that. But once we unplugged it, uh, the five volts did come up. Okay, which means that you know we something was stressing and stressing out, stressing down the five volt line under load. Uh, but in this case, we have it unplugged and it's still jumping around. Okay, so before it was like a bad capacitor or something, but now it might be a little something more more concrete, more serious, maybe a short or something like that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do um, is go ahead and unplug it. Okay. And we're actually going to start checking components. Now, on these boards here, uh, and also this board, I just want to mention this out, this board does have a legend for that plug at the very bottom also on the opposite side of the board. Okay, so it has one on top and one on the bottom. It's just upside down, of course, because the way we get the board situated. But uh, as you can see, once again, our five volt standbys, pin one and pin two, okay, and then um, the other pins. So, what we're going to have to do when we do when we get a set like this is we're actually going to have to check for. This is my advice: is check for shorts. You definitely want to check. I'm just going to plug this from my make a side of ground for my meter on continuity. Uh, definitely want to check for. If you see any of these on the bottom here, these little these little MOSFETs on the, on the bottom, um, those can be some real troublemakers. Um, you know, make sure you definitely check those. Make sure those are not shorted. Okay, um, not too much on the bottom, but definitely make sure that you check. Closer here, it might be a little bit better. Okay, definitely make sure you check things like, um, especially number one thing is things on the secondary side, like these MOSFETs on these heat sinks. Of course, these uh, nice power diodes here, and also these here and uh, these here. Most of the time, if you get a short on the primary side, it'll just blow off the AC fuse and you won't get any standby voltages. Uh, it's my experience, but anything on the secondary side, yeah, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have a jumping up and down, reading, you know what I'm saying, things like that. So uh, I'm just going to cut through the chase right here. I did check all these FETs. Uh, if anyone wants to see, I do get comments in my video. Show us how to check it. Okay, so I always assume that everybody's, uh, you know, kind of technically in inclined as far as that, but it's real easy. This is the FET right here. Um, yeah, that's this, this one right here. It's on the primary side, the hot side of the ground. I'm just going to check it here. Just show you that it shouldn't read, you know, short. Okay, the one next to it. Okay, it seems to be good. The ones on top here, those are good. Uh, ones on the secondary side, I think, uh, let's see, where are those fits at? Okay, right here on top. Seem to be okay. Seem to be okay. Okay, now in some cases you will have the two pins on the back will be shorter together. I think uh, these are like diodes, 
you know. But as long as that, uh, what is it, the uh, uh, drain pin or source pin, the one that's always sticking out, as long as that's not short to any one of these other two pins, most likely you're in good shape, okay? If you get a short from here to here, and it's, yeah, then you're in trouble then. It's just change it, pull it out, check, recheck it, and change it. Okay, I'm also, so those are okay, it's going to be okay. I'm also going to check these uh, diodes here. Okay, now that should not be shorted. Okay, all three of those are reading short. Now, I've already worked on this, so I already know what the problem is. It's just one of those diodes. And for any checks, uh, I need a quick reference on that. Uh, once you check those diodes, the only diode that's actually shorted is the DM853. Uh, okay. Um, and because those diodes are connected in parallel, so of course you're going to get it short across the other ones. And I'm also going to check this fuse here, make sure. I, I, sh I wouldn't think it would be open because we do have some kind of voltage on our standby jumping around. Okay, so that is good. That's how fuse is supposed to read. Okay, but a diode is not supposed to read like that. A diode should read like, uh, let me see if I can find one. Here's one over here on this side. Okay, let me zoom out. There's a diode here. Another one looks like a MUR or something. But this is how it should read. In reverse the leads, you should get a 0.5 or 0.4. That's just the amount of voltage it takes to cut it on. Uh, 0.4 volts, 0.7 or whatever. And the other side should be reading close, close to infinite. Okay, sometimes when you test diodes, you'll see capacitor charging up in the circuit with it, but just leave your meter on there and it, and it should, you know, uh, read okay, all right, and not shorter. That's the main thing. So actually, I'm just going to pull this one out. And um, I got my uh, solder, I, I solder here, my soldering iron, I'm trying to say. And um, Styles up here. I'm just going to go back and forth. I'm just going to pull it out with my hand actually because I've already um, just going to heat the side up here and just pull it out, pull that side out, and pull that side out. Usually that easy in most cases. If not, just put some solder on each end if you're doing a fresh one, and that'll loosen the rest of the solder up, and you'll be able to put your iron on there and it'll and like I and do just like I just did. Okay, so let's double check this dial here. That's definitely shorted. Okay, now I'm going to check the other ones. Those are reading. Good. Like I said, capacitor, capacitor charging up with it. Now, the reason that this side is, um, the one side may be reading about 2.2 volts because this is a, it should go to about point there, yeah, point two. Uh, this is a shocky diode, and I'm going to show you the part number just so I can, uh, so you can tell. I couldn't find my needle noses, but I guess I just hold it in my finger here. Maybe you can see it if I zoom in on it. Okay, everything that's not going to work. There we go, a little bit further, a little bit, a little bit further. There we go. Okay. So. All right. This is a 51. Come on, a little bit further. There we go. This is a 51. Um, 51.50. And there should be like an SC or something on here. This says SB or uh, TB. Well, this is actually a shocky rectifier diode. And uh, basically, I think it's just a little faster and a little more powerful. But the, as you can see, the the five, one, okay, on the bottom there, on the bottom, the number on the bottom. Maybe my fingers in the way. Okay, the number on the bottom there says something B, fifty one fifty. Right, fifty one 
50. Okay, that means it's a 5 amp shocky diode at 150 volts. Okay, so what I do have, I'm just going to do for testing purposes, and it should last anyway, you know, um, is I do have a, I don't know what did with my old one, I guess, is this it here? I do have a Now this one actually has the initials here, SR Shakti, Shakti Rectifier Diode. If you want to find out some more about how this dial works and exactly what it is and why it's different from a regular, uh, I guess, fast switching dial, just look up the part number on the internet like I showed you in one of my videos before. Look, look the data sheet up on it and it'll tell you exactly how it works and what it does. And this one is a 3150. So basically what that means is a Shakti Rectifier Diode at 3 amps instead of 5 at 150. But, you know, it, it should work. Uh, you know, it'll, we'll plug it up and it would, you know, unplug it and make sure it's not getting overheated or anything once we get it back inside the TV, if that's all that you have. Otherwise, you can do the same thing and get the SR5150 uh, uh, off of eBay, okay? I did order some, but this guy here is in a rush, <laughs> and you know why, right, because it's playoff season. And so I'm just going to put this in here and, you know, give them a 90-day warranty. If it blows out, I'll have those diodes already because, like I said, I did order them off eBay. And they came like 10 in the pack or 5 in the pack. I'm not sure. So we're just going to put that one in there. And I'll check our voltage again, okay? Okay. Uh, we got that diode in here. Uh, we're just going to flip it around once again. Uh, check it. Check the R5 volt standby. Um, once again... Located right down there on pin one. Okay. Right. Oops. Okay, that's our um, backlight connection. Here we go. All right. Back here on the connector going to the main board, that's where our standby voltage always is, okay, on that particular plug. You don't have to worry about any other plugs. Just check your standby voltage first on a dead set, okay, that's the key thing to remember. And once again, I did mark it. It's our 5 volts, and I think that's our um, um, power on, which we'll, we're going to get into in a minute. And I think this is our 12 volt uh, sources here. Uh, of course, the 12 volt sources, where it says 12 volt regulated, this down here in the legend, uh, those of course would not come up until the main board, until you hit the power button or the remote power, and and the main board then tells uses that uses that standby voltage, sends it through a circuit, and tells the main board to turn on. I'm sorry, it tells the power supply to turn on with either they with either a zero volts or a plus five or four volts, and then the rest of the voltages should come on, but. Uh, a lot of you guys should know that, but I'm just going to go ahead and get this done as quick as I can. Go ahead and grab my meter again. Same spot. If you want, you can also ground it here and here. Just make sure there's continuity here. I always, I'll always double check this to um, these little tabs just to make sure. That they are connected to the ground leads on here. Just do a continuity check to one of these that say ground from here, and and uh, put your positive on one of these leads that says ground, and it should beep, and you know you're all set. Okay, so anyway, I'll just go ahead and turn that back around. Okay, you can see my meter here. Put it back on DC volts. All right, got my negative lead plugged into ground. Positive here. I'm gonna plug up my um, TV. Make sure because I did have this is a, this is a core here that has a little metal thing on the. Okay, we should be all set. Okay, all right. So let's give it a whirl. All right, it is on, and I'm gonna go here and let's do a little check. Let me see my meter a little better. Got that little light there. Golly, there we go. That's, that's a little better. Hopefully, is it? Yeah, we do. We we'll do it about the light. Okay. All right. So we'll go, once again, we'll go here. to our standby voltage and let's see what we got here 
that is steady okay and that is steady and we should also have another 5 volt source somewhere down here like we'll say it's 5 volts something I don't remember was it this one one of these here here we go these are other 5 volts okay so that is steady as you can see uh, it's not jumping around and you see the little uh, RMS counter is not pulsating or anything that means there's no shouldn't be any interference or any kind of uh, reverse pulling on it so that should be okay so now the next thing that we actually want to check this is like kind of like an important thing um, <clears throat> is we're gonna go ahead and let me unplug this first before I shock myself okay <laughs> which can be done to me still all right all right we're gonna look at here we're gonna look at actually look at our power on I'm sorry, where were we at? Okay, this is back line on our power on plug where it says power supply on. It's pin number four. I think I got that mark. And we want to make sure, we want to tap that to our 5 volt standby and make sure that the 12 volts uh, is coming up. Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to take a, um, I know I'm going to get a lot, a lot of feedback on this because I'm using a fuse, but I'm going to take my little pew fuse because it has. Uh, little thin leaves on it and I'm just going to turn it around I want to place one on the trace of my 5 volt standby let me get my Superman glasses once again so I can see our 5 volt standby trace right here okay and make sure I got that right and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tap our, I'm actually going to tap the, our power on and now you can't leave it on here uh, but because I'm using a fuse um, I don't leave it on there too long, but like I said, uh, people always use a. Like, you gotta use a hundred ohm resistor. You gotta use a thousand ohm resistor. You know, it's only like 0.5 volts going through here. So if, especially, especially if you got a, a pico fuse at 0.5 volts and using it to check it with. If you do, if you do, actually, right. But anyway, um, so what I did is I put my fuse on the uh, standby one side on the standby trace here, uh, which is five volts, and I'm just gonna tap the power supply on pin and put my meter here on the 12 volt line uh, which I did mark uh, right here with these two pins this is the 12 volt it's definitely what you want to check uh, after the power supply is turned on uh, from the main board and make sure that does come up okay so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my set here plug it in plug it in okay Keep my meter here on the 12 volt line. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to the trace right here. Uh, the two pins tied together, they're connected, so they're both the 12, the 12 volt regulated um, source. And I'm just going to tap my power knob. You don't have to be careful. I mean, you have to be. Uh, this, this is five volts going through here, so I'm not touching it with my hand. But come on, stay on, stay on, stay on. So actually, I'm just going to have to go to the trace of the power supply on one. Come on. Here we go. All right, that's our 12 volts. And I'll take it off. That's it. Okay, so um, we can now go up to our customer's house with confidence. Put the board back in there and everything else should be working just fine okay all right so guys that's it um thanks for watching 
Uh, make sure you subscribe for more videos. When you do subscribe, make sure that you hit the little pit, the little bell symbol, church bell or school bell symbol next to it so you can get notified. Uh, when, and whenever I make a new video, you'll be the first one to get notified. And you guys have a very blessed day, blessed weekend. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.